All right, let's do some research. I am thinking about writing an article. Something along the line why highlighting text is useless may be even bad for you. And the context is, it's about importing highlighted text wholesale from services like Readwise. Is it good or is it bad? My initial thought was, it must be bad. And I had to think of it when I was looking at my Zettelkasten and I had this reasoning. Uh, Zettelkasten, that's your notes, then you have engagement, you're busy with your notes, underlining it's not that good and the isolation paradigm might make it dangerous when you highlight things. So this reasoning together I thought, well, it must be terrible. And I decided to do some research on it. Um, I found an excellent article, which was just terrible. Five terrific reasons why to underline important lines in a book. And it was just so bad. It helps really get text, makes the book look better, makes you look studious, useful, and easy to remember where you read the text. And I just thought this is all this terrible. But then I started studying a bit more and it's actually not that terrible. Let me close what I don't need um, because it does help actually to relocate text. Uh, it does make it look better and it's interesting that that's actually quite good. It makes you feel studious. That's actually not that good. And now I am at it's useful in note making. And there's this interesting von Restorff effect, which means that if you highlight something, it's useful. But is it really useful? And I found this study exploring differences in students' copy and paste decision making and processing a mixed method study. I haven't read it yet, but I did look at it and it looked interesting. I'm going to use this, well, I hope, to find some conclusion, concluding uh, reasons why it's good or bad. So let's look at the article. Exploring differences in students' copy and paste decision making processing a mixed method study. So they're studying copy and paste. Recent research suggests that when students gather information electronically from internet sources, the majority of them will create notes in word processing program, etc., etc., and copy paste. Yes, that's what we do. The article is not that new, so clearly the use of copy and paste is common. Yes, we all do it. The current research literature, however, has little to say. Okay. How to conceptualize? Yes, now it starts to begin interesting. Essentially, copy-paste note-taking has two components, the selection of information and the creation of a record. As such, a great deal of preposition in text and lining paper and pencil note-taking seems relevant. Yes, because then you kind of do the same thing. Copy-paste note-taking is related to text underlining because news process information deemed important is selected. Yes. Okay, so this is kind of the general context. Let's highlight it. They may use it either to process to create a record of information from a text source. However, text that is copied and pasted always is moved to a new document where it is available for new study. So this is relevant to these services because that's actually what happens. You take it from one place and you put it somewhere else. Previous research suggests that the process does not boost learning where the review of notes does. I'm going to highlight it, but I'm going to make it another color. So I use these colors yellow it's important by the author 
lime or green. It's important to me, but not necessarily to the author. Blue are things that I want to quote. Red is, I think, is something stupid. And purple is interesting, but not interesting for the discussion, but interesting as a side point. So this is interesting, but it's more like a general thing. It's not being proven. In case after case, the notes plus review groups learn more ideas from text lecture. Yes, notes plus review. In fact, there is evidence that when notes are recorded but not reviewed, the note taking process might actually hinder learning, particularly when students are young. Yes, I read that also in previous studies might not use it, but it's interesting. Given these findings, it might seem ludicrous for a student to spend time taking notes or online decks without the intent to review them. Yes. This is the main point why I don't like these services. If you just highlight and don't use it later, then it's kind of useless. Okay. Learning is improved. Main ideas. It's the same. It seems that note-taking online techniques do not improve learning unless their product notes or underlines are studied. Or if the techniques themselves are augmented to promote the evaluation of ideas. Through summarization or during underlining process text on a deeper level. This is of course interesting. on the basis of copy-paste basic relation to online note-taking could be predicted that unrestricted copy-paste note-taking where unlimited amount of text can be pasted and little evaluation is required likely would promote little encoding of text information beyond simple reading. Yes. This is interesting. If they were prompted for deep revelation of text ideas, the student's cognitive processing also could be deepened. Yes, so if they do more than just highlighting, first phase of the student tested two versions of note-taking, restricted and unrestricted. Nice. Yes, from a practical standpoint, there is evidence that when learners take notes in a web-based environment, more of them will choose to use a copy-paste function than typing function. Yeah, who wants to do that? Also, the internet has rapid income information source, yes. Greetings from the 80s. In the unrestricted condition, students were allowed to select unlimited amounts of information to store in each cell.
Other students were restricted to copying and pasting no more than seven words. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That must be so annoying. Okay, this is the test themselves. capability result in encoding more of the facts they gathered while taking notes. Correctly answering more items designed, yes. Research confirms that the summary, evaluation, noting component can promote encoding. And encoding is only if it was restricted because they had to think more about what to copy. Consistent with previous research, students in both the restricted and unrestricted conditions got notes and they were both correct. But there were clear differences in the amount of notes taken. <laughs> A restrictor note taker almost always pasted the maximum seven words per cell. It's interesting because it means that they didn't want to be restricted, but they were forced to be restricted. 42 words against 7. Interesting. As the researchers carefully scrutinized note, it became clear that the division into the restricted and unrestricted groups was simply not enough as the notes clearly clearly revealed distinct student preferences within each group. restricted note takers, those who pasted existing word strings and those who combined words from different areas.
this is nice. I had to constantly evaluate. I monitored myself the whole time. I didn't want to use too many words. And so I didn't think about it that much. Processing. It's the same as over there. It's interesting to note that three of the six restricted interviewers who describe deep processing use the word evaluate in some way. They did so of their own volition, having not been prompted. Statements such as these were not obtained from any members of the unrestricted group. Myself. It took a lot of thinking. <laughs> it took a lot of thinking to find seven words that not only had the information but also made sense to me. Nothing was stated really concisely in the text, so I had to get it in my head first and then make a seven word summary of what I was thinking. And that's just great. But I did take some time on the behavior theory, and that is the one that I remember the most. I thought about this the same way I usually take notes, ask myself if I understood what I read, and if I did, then I would use fewer words than if I did not understand it. I did not want to use too many words because when I take notes in general it helps me remember if I summarize things in fewer words. The unrestricted ones. If something got mine that I thought that needed to be there I would use it. Yeah. Unrestricted condition described engaging in shallow processing simply because the unrestricted tool allowed them to do so. I read it, but I knew I did not have to be nitpicky for any cell, so I did not think about it that much. I did not have to concentrate very hard. I did not have to because I could choose whatever sounded good. I 
very selective. In some cases I had to keep changing the words I used if a better one came along. statement made regarding changing one's note-taking selection are working for a who also performed extremely well on the quizzes. The places that were more vague made me look more closely and change things, like for key assumptions. I didn't know exactly what I needed to look for, so I would say, okay, I already have that under definition, but I don't have this, and it sounds important. I better include the numbers under definition, move the number to assumptions. This has much to do. Several of the restricted and unrestricted students who made highly selective decisions if you had a preference for great summaries. In the unrestricted group, there were those that tried to do it as they usually did, so self-restricted. Eight of the twelve unrestricted interviewers describe shallow levels of processing while taking notes. So that the cost might outweigh the benefits, yes, if it's possible to not do the work. Restricting the amount of textual information students were able to copy paste the notes positively influenced the processing in which they engaged. Process it 
more carefully. Too bad you cannot see the colors anymore. Restricted note taking. just copy paste. interesting they were both correct
styles to not break definition don't understand the text it's this one of people Choose I chose when there was sound resistance which is natural more people do this everybody but no one tired so it makes Just 
restricted basters and general engaged in deeper processing and more selective decision making. Conclusion restricting human detection information to interim to code based on diagnosis positively influenced the processing. But it's not because of the copy and pasting, it is because, yeah. If you can copy paste whatever you want, you don't have to process. And if you don't have to, you won't. The bed rules of copy paste was not restricted in some way, this proved to be true.
this burning not fitting with the rest probably there so it's not bad by definition but it brings out the worst and if it's limited, then it's not bad. So it is about engagement. Resistance, yes, the path of the least. Let's make it least resistant. So some resist it's resistant, not least resist resistance. Yes. Resistance then resistance. Because some resistance is useful.
parsing information should not be too easy. It makes it too. No, it should not be too easy. As it invites. Yes. Parsing information should not be too easy as it invites shallow studying. Yeah, that's good enough. Parsing information. Is there anything that's not already here? Can I link this to understanding knowledge analysis resistance, but of course also here engagement get already as many, but still maybe not. Maybe this way. Underlining. Isolation not so much selective. Yes, those people were not being selective. Expansion flow connection focus it on next step purpose. Value linking value. Yeah, they did not choose things. Li limits, yes, they did not limit themselves. Analysis, yes, not enough analysis. Oh, I already have that. <laughs> Predictability, something because of this planning structure. Shortcut, yes. Okay. This is enough. This can go away. Let's go back to the article. And now I did this. Understanding analysis resistance. Oh, for now, I'm just going to add this link. And that's how I add some information to the article. Okay, that's enough for now.